This ain't Tasha. Okay, it's Bondi Blue. What's going on, y'all? We back for another Unwind with Tasha K, girl. It's so much going on in the streets. It's so much mess going on. It's so much wine in the building, baby. We got a lot to get into, but before we get into it, for everybody that act like they a Tasha fan, but for some reason don't know me, I'm Bondi Blue. How are you? Happy Good Friday for all the Catholics and y'all out there. Okay? Listen, we got a good show for y'all. Make sure y'all like up the video. Follow me on Twitter, X, whatever they call it now. Blue Rose Bondi. Follow me on YouTube and Instagram at Bondi Blue because y'all going to be questioning for the rest of the live who I am. Girl, I'm Bondi Blue. Get into it, okay? But we're going to roll this break. We're going to roll this ad. And when we come back, girl, we got a story for y'all. Meet the Browns, Glinos. Hey, okay, Miss Tina Brown. Tina Brown. Okay, Shane Brown. You ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Now, I ain't going to lie. Like, I love Bobby Brown. You and Bobby, how close were y'all? Very close. What was it like living with Whitney? It was fun. You smoke crack with Whitney, you said? That's Absolutely. pretty. Absolutely. You don't know that? We only know Bobby and Whitney. Girl. And every time he's sitting down, he talking about Whitney. And I'm like, how as a new wife do you deal with this? Like, That's why I hit that bitch with a bottle. And it dwindled down to, it dwindled down. you know, some people it that- It dwindled down to my brother touching <laughs> three of my toes. Who, Bobby? <laughs> yes. Sure, but. Yes. But, you know. Yes. I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I can't hold it no more. All right, winos, if you enjoy shows like this and would like to see more with me on stage in your city, well, I'm coming. Tickets on sale right now. Link in the description box as well as the bio. Hurry up now while tickets last, okay? <laughs> Yes, make sure to get your tickets on TashaKOnStage.com so that you can come through to the live show and see, see what it's like in person. Get this energy. You know what I'm saying? Because I might be at one of the shows, too, for all of y'all that love to hate me. How you doing? Okay, so first story up, Abby and Brittany Hensel. Girl, when I tell you, listen, I don't want to say what I told Jasmine, but I, I, I'ma just say they shouldn't have never, Roe v. Wade should have been left alone. I'ma just say this, okay? We know about Abby and Brittany from TLC's reality series. Um, I don't know what it is about TLC, but they love to go and find the most obscure people to put on reality TV for y'all to, to oogle and ogle at, girl. And these two right here, this is Abby and Brittany. Y'all know that they share a body, right? One got control of this arm. The other one got control of this arm. Mm -hmm. And if you were wondering if both of them are getting married to Josh, oh no, this is Josh Bolin. Okay, he's only getting married to Abby. He, 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 he may not even like Brittany. He may not even like her, but she right here. And she controlled his arm. They got married and we found out that they share the nether regions, y'all. The, 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 the vagina. They share the vagina. And now they're share sharing it with Josh. This is them at the wedding, y'all. They had a nice little dance. He's only looking, he's only looking at Abby. He's only kissing Abby. Brittany's just there to, to keep this other arm up here for my sis and her, her new husband. Girl. When I tell you, what is that like to lay in a bed and, 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 you know, like, do you just be hanging off on the side? Does he ever just fall over on top of you like you're not even there? And, you just, you know, you got his, his, you know, fat boy sweat all on your face. You know what I'm saying? Because your face is right here. Like, do you feel this titty? You know what I'm saying? Like, when he tries to go for both of them, do you feel one? You know what I'm saying? Like, <sighs> I have so many questions. Like, I just don't even understand, girl. Like, what? how you marry just one of them when they share the body? Girl. 
I think something is amiss. Like, just something feel, don't it, it feel like something wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, how you gonna marry one of them and you don't really see it for the other one, but she ain't going nowhere. She gonna be here. And what if she, how she gonna date somebody? She can't just take the body and leave. She can't, like, what if she don't want to be here no more? She cannot take the body and just walk away because the other leg might want to stay. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen here. Um, I, 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 I know we want to congratulate them, but I feel bad for the one head that ain't got no, no, it look like she ain't got no choice in this. Like, she's just alone for the ride. Sad. But congratulations to them. Oh, Lord. Let's move on. Well, as I said, ha, this ain't Tasha, okay? Beyonce came out with Cowboy Carter last night, and the internet is in a frenzy. Oh, yes, y'all are so excited about Beyonce and her white woman cosplay playing in the country music. And I didn't know how I was going to feel about it, y'all. Let me tell y'all the truth. I was listening to it, and I was like, okay, like at the beginning, you know, we talking about black people. The whole album is about black people in country that white people try to keep on the outskirts. You know what I'm saying? And I remember when I first talked about this, I was like, I don't know how Beyonce going to help any of these other artists. She's going to dip her toe in. She going to do well, and then she going to skate right on back. You know what I'm saying? She's going to skate right on back. And apparently she brought some of the people with her. So shout out to Beyonce for this album because really it did bring attention to country artists that may not be getting the recognition of Sha Boozy, Willie Jones, and that sexy ass Tanner uh, Adele. Girl, when I, yes, her. Her. I like her. I didn't even know who she was until today. I ain't know her. Mm -mm. I ain't know her. But when I saw her, and you know what I'm saying, she was standing there in the parking lot. I was like, hold up, bitch. I might have to go get on this. I liked her music. And D. Rainer Roberts, who was on two of the songs, she posted on her Instagram. She was super duper excited. Um, You know, I got my denim on, denim on, denim on, denim. You heard me? Okay, listen. I'm going to go and listen to the rest of the album. I think I got four more tracks. But I think it's a really good album, y'all. She says it's some of her best music. She says it was actually written and, and I guess, finished almost before Renaissance, but it's some good stuff on there, girl. And I'm gonna tell y'all my favorite one. And I hate that this is my favorite one because it's so cliche. But if I let me, I'm tell y'all something. Jolene, Jolene, I cannot wait for them to put Jolene on a bounce beat because I already know what's gonna happen. They gonna throw it and we gonna be, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we gonna have to hit it real hard when Jolene ends up being on a bounce beat. Okay, but even though we ain't know how we felt, Beyonce, we ain't know how we felt about you, but the album is good, girl. I'm going to give it to you. All right, so if anybody's wondering why Jay-Z isn't answering any of Diddy's phone calls, isn't answering any of 50's phone calls, let me tell y'all something. This is just my opinion. This is my opinion. Come close. Let me tell you. I think they knew beforehand that Diddy was going to get raided. So they decided to start this very American-ass album in Japan. I was like, why are y'all in Japan when the album kicks off? Like, this is supposed to be... This supposed to be Cowboy Carter. Look, Kelly Rowland back there. Y'all see y'all see him with his, with his free-form locks looking real happy. You know why? Let me tell y'all something. Everybody think that Jay-Z is going to be the next one. Y'all think of Sloan, uh, the, 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 the medium, the lady on YouTube, she put it out there. She said, he coming next. I'm like, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. He got Beyonce on his side. And I'm telling y'all, that's why a lot of these men marry black women like Jay-Z, Denzel Washington, Samuel L. Jackson, you know, Russell Wilson and figured it out. Black women will go to the ends of the earth do you hear me? The earth to save they man, to stick beside him. Y'all see how Carisha over there, Carisha said, I'm trying to talk about, we're going to get to her in a minute. But ultimately, I feel like Beyonce is protection for Jay-Z, just as Jay-Z can sometimes be a bodyguard <laughs> or the go-between for Beyonce. You know, he's her handler. She went from her daddy as a handler to Jay-Z as a handler. And it seems to me that because she's so successful, 
I do believe that whatever happens with Jay Z is probably not going to be nearly as ignorant as the stuff going on with Diddy. But if y'all notice, them people don't really mess with Diddy like that. Yeah, they show up to some parties. You know, y'all might be at the rock brunch together taking pictures. But as far as parties and all of that, you don't really see them people. <laughs> You don't really see them people at these parties like that. And I wonder why. They know what's going on. And they know what's done in the dark will eventually come to light. And if I can't protect myself from the federally hood, I can't come to your party, Diddy. I don't know what's going on. You ain't about to get me on camera sniffing pink cocaine off Beyonce's titties. You ain't about to get us like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you imagine? Because you know people say, you know, it's speculation that Beyonce, you know, we love her. Don't be mad at me, y'all. But there is some speculation that Beyonce might be on something. They say she be out there, you know, when she, you know, white lady hair. We don't know. We don't know. She might be on pills. They, That's what they, y'all. I don't think, I don't think that, Beyonce fans. I don't think that. But the people out there be speculating that sis might, you know, perk sit. Miley perk, you know what I'm saying? Something. That's what they say, girl. I don't know. Maybe she on antidepressants. It's hard out here. But she's making great music. So whatever's going on, she's turning it into something. But I will say this. I hope that Jay-Z isn't still cheating. I hope it hasn't been any more cheatation since Lemonade. Because the country album is definitely giving these hoes keep trying to take my man and I'm about that life. And, you know, I just don't want the women to continue to fight over men. I don't feel like that's necessary. But Beyonce, girl, good job on Cowboy Carter. It's cute. We're going to give it another listen. Okay, shout out to all of the stands out there. Okay, we on our country shit. Okay. Jolene, Jolene. All right, go on. Well, y'all, didn't I tell y'all, didn't I tell y'all, big teeth, <laughs> okay, and Dennis' daddy was going to be back, yeah, I know y'all don't know, I call Simon Dennis' daddy, because I never forget them two standing next to each other looking like father and son, with her in the middle trying to pretend like she might have been pregnant, child, y'all know Portia just loved to pretend, like, I just want a family, I just want a family. Family. Like, girl, oh, just so thirsty. But either way, girl, Simon sign, uh, sent a cease and desist. He said, y'all ain't going to be filming at my house for Real Housewives of Atlanta. And I'm like, so you don't want the attention? You've been online yapping them dentures. You've been online pinning and posting. You've been letting everybody know that you got a Porsche Big Teeth look-alike coming right on through. It ain't even been that long. New bitch in the seat already. And now you mean to tell us you don't want Real Housewives of Atlanta to come and film? Oh, we know why, because you don't want it to make you look bad. But ultimately, y'all, Portia is saying that she had no idea. I had no idea he was a scammer. It's all lies. It's all lies. Shout out to Carly Red, who probably still has me blocked on Instagram. But I don't believe Portia. I don't believe Portia for a second. I believe Portia very much knew that he was into something. You knew he was into something. But I also felt like she was stupid. Because why are you quitting all your jobs for a man that you only really been with for a few months? And then you marry him, and then y'all divorce after 15 months of marriage. Child, when we think about how she had poor, B, poor PJ, Portia Jr., sitting on Dennis' daddy's lap after only being in a relationship with him for a few months. So you got to be careful with birds like Portia. You got to be careful because they the ones that will let somebody do something to their kid all oh, because they so desperate and delusional for a fairy tale that ain't going to never happen. It was so many of y'all arguing with me. They in love. Love wins. Portia got her man, girl. It's all right to, you know, hunch on somebody else's husband and steal him right from under the girl's feet. But let me tell you, you can't really steal a man that don't want to be took. You know what I'm saying? I don't really feel like Simon is somebody that you can hold on to. You can't, you can't hold on to him. Oh, no, it's only two to five years. And then he going to go and find him a new one, okay? And that's what he's doing right now, child. I saw him on a, on a flight fleeing to Dubai. I guess, you know, you're going to go out there and do what exactly? I don't know. 
I don't know what he doing, child. It's, just, it's still scammery and confusion. But Portia, I don't believe you. I think you knew what was going on. You just thought he would take care of it. Now, I do want to know why y'all decided to divorce. I'm very, very interested. The real reason. And also, he mentioned that she had a little boyfriend. He don't want her to delete text messages because she had a little boyfriend. And I was like, I told y'all. I told y'all. She over there hunching on Bolo. You know what I'm saying? Clack, 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 clack. Muscles in, in young, virile. Look like he banging holes out. You know what I'm saying? Y'all be watching, you know, all the Queensmen. Bolo on there banging people out. So I don't know why y'all thought that Portia was really sexually attracted to Dennis' daddy. That's why she had to do all of that work on him. Get him with the Botox. Get the new teeth. Get the skin all firmed up. Get him, get him one of them real good belly-holding girdles that the men like to wear. Okay? Had him looking good on the Instagram. Had y'all hoes fooled. Well, it's a nasty divorce. And uh, we'll just see what happens as we move forward towards this divorce that they have going on because he hasn't responded to her divorce filing, which is another thing. Why haven't you responded to the divorce filing? You on the internet dragging her by her fake teeth. What's the problem? Girl, they a mess. I would love to know what's really going on over there, but I don't think we'll ever find out. <laughs> they gonna keep it under wraps. Well, y'all, we'll talk about them again soon. Let's move on. So, y'all... Mm. And we've come to the end of the road. Uh, da, 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 da. Tiana Taylor and Amon Shooper. Y'all, when I tell y'all, yeah, I know most of these dudes be out here bad. But I really didn't think it was going to be Amon and Tiana like this. I am shocked. But, y'all, it's, it, it's not getting any better between the two of them. And this time I'm kind of looking at, I'm kind of looking at Tiana like, nah, bitch, come on now. <laughs> come on now. What you think going on? Apparently, Tiana wants to call in, she wants to call in a psychologist so that they can determine the damage that's been done to little Junie and Rue because he didn't have his new at the house with her kids <laughs> okay apparently Tiana Taylor was on FaceTime with her kids and he had his little girlfriend there and the girlfriend's girl um the girlfriend's little girl was there as well they went to Sky Zone and had a sleepover Tiana says her oldest daughter was confused after seeing Amon and his companion sharing a bed and claims Amon told her the friend was staying with him because her home was broken why y'all got to lie to kids? Tell kids the truth. They going to figure it out anyway. I've seen Junie. Junie is smart as hell. That little girl know what's going on. If there's any reason why she's really upset, it's because she feel like you playing her mama like a soybean burger bitch. That's what it feel like to me. Okay? In the docs, Tiana says she feels a man doesn't need to be flaunting the fling during his brief time with his daughters. She points out he only has them on the first and third weekend of every month plus a handful of Fridays. So you don't even have them all the time like that. And when they are with you, you got to have your, your new chick and her kid with you that Tiana is calling a fling. Girl, that don't sound like a fling. That don't sound like a fling. That sounds like somebody he's dating because he wants to make sure that a woman is there to take care of his daughters <laughs> when they come over to stay with him, okay? Like, y'all know how these men be. Y'all know how they be. Oh, yeah, I'm a great father as long as I got my mama or a girlfriend to help me take care of my kids. Then I'm a great father. But if they had to take care of these damn kids all by themselves, the child ain't going to get nothing to eat. You're going to put her in an Uber by herself. She only six. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it, it definitely feels like he had a woman over there to help him with these kids. Um, still, she believes Amon isn't aware of how his actions are affecting the children, which is why she wants a child psychologist to weigh in on the subject for the judge in their divorce case. And there's more. Tiana is calling out Amon for withdrawing millions of dollars from they joint account. I said, not this nigga stealing money too. Oh my God, he's going out bad. He's going out bad. I knew once he had them plats, y'all, you can't trust no nigga with plats. 
And I'm going to keep telling y'all that. You can't trust no man with plaits. When I saw Will Smith beijing his beard, I was so disappointed because you can't trust no man that beijing his beard. I don't care what you say. Like, what you doing that for? What you trying to hide? Nigga, we can see you old. What's going on? Okay? But when he got them plaits, I was like, he ain't, he ain't good no more, y'all. He ain't good. Tiana additionally wants a financial expert to testify because she alleges Amon withdrew $4 million from their shared accounts. Bitch, not $150,000, not two hundred. dollars He took $4 million from their accounts. Girl, this is turning out to be worse than I ever thought it would be, and I'm sad for them, y'all. I had high hopes, okay? I used to say, you know, me and my husband was the great value version of them. You know what I'm saying? For a few reasons, okay? He tall, big lips, nice looking, except for my husband looked better than this. Then he look at this picture. I don't know what's going on right here. But you know, in the past, in the past, when they did photo shoots and stuff, I'm little, you know what I'm saying? Like the girls. But yeah, this is this is sad. We ain't wanna see y'all go out like this. Well, huh, let's move on. All right, so funky sweatshirt wearing. Beard don't quite always connect. What happened at your house with that girl screaming and hollering, hollering DJ Academics? Yeah, I'm hot. Has something to say about Lil Baby. Lil Baby apparently had a video. Play the video. Some nails on. We ain't got no video of it? We got video? There we go. Okay, he's showing y'all he got his nails done. He got his nails done. What? I got my nails done. What? What? Okay, I'm that nigga got my nails done. Now, I ain't gonna lie. There is some footage of little baby at a Diddy party or two. <laughs> Being hugged by a Caucasian man. And I'm gonna say that that doesn't look good to me. That does not look good to me to see little baby hugged up with a Caucasian man. But I wanna tell y'all there's nothing wrong with people wearing nail polish. There's nothing wrong with it. I saw a basketball player just now that said he wear it so he won't bite his fingernails because y'all know nail polish tastes terrible. So as soon as you put your fingers in your mouth and you bite into it, <laughs> now you stop, okay? But I just think it's so weird for a man that's just so unattractive that just sits there talking shit about people all day. And I know you might think you talk shit about people, but I'm attractive. I I'm that girl in real life. I don't need to be a celebrity. I'm that girl in real life. DJ Academics is not that nigga in real life. <laughs> He's not, okay? Because this what you talking about? Lil Baby's nail polish? Why Lil Baby can't wear nail polish? What's wrong with y'all? Y'all really be out here trying to micromanage how black men express themselves, and it's really detrimental. It's really detrimental. If little Baby or any other black man wants to wear nail polish, that does not feminize him. Like, stop, does he really look feminine right now because the nail polish is shining along with his diamonds and teeth? Like what? The, the, the nail is the same color as his teeth. I don't know why anybody can't see the coordination going on there. But to me, DJ Academics is somebody that's just always hating on people that can get the puss he can't get. That's what it feel like to me. Um, and let's not forget, you got invited to them Diddy parties too, you little Teddy Graham ass <laughs> What's going on with you and Diddy? You was talking shit about Carisha real bad, and then Diddy made a phone call, and all of a sudden you got quiet for a minute. Then you started talking shit again. But you only, I feel like, was talking shit because you knew Diddy was over there worrying about the federality hood, so he wasn't going to have time and money to send anybody over to your smelly-looking ass. Y'all, I don't like him. It's okay. It's all right. I don't need to like everybody. Y'all don't like me, so it's cool. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on. Leave people alone. <sighs> Carlisa, 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 child, Tasha and Carlisa been arguing on the internet today. Tasha said Carlisa ain't never took care of her kids and that Krishan is a better crackhead hoe than she is, okay? Because I'm sorry, y'all, Krishan's a crackhead. I don't care what anybody says. Anybody that's acting crazy over blue face is a crackhead. <laughs> that's how I want to go ahead and put it out. I want to identify that you a crackhead when you act like this over a man. When you are willing to take your mother and teeth out over a man, you are on crack. <laughs> okay? Whenever we're losing the dentals, it's crack. Okay? But Carlisa had a lot to say because, you know, she always got a lot to say. Roll the beautiful beans. They was beans trying bitch. to recruit. 
um, Krishan. That, that's what that's what Diddy and uh, what's the, what's the girl Krishit Krish. Carisha was trying to recruit Rock. Remember that when they was heavily trying to get Rock to hang out with them? I think they was trying to recruit her. She got a lot going on. We're going to talk about it on this podcast. And we're going to get to the nitty gritty of all the gritty of the nitty. Because it's, it, it's necessary. I think them mother was trying to recruit her. Because hey, remember they just had her pulling up everything. Thought she talking about, do you love her? Mm -hmm. Yeah, about? remember? See what I'm saying? Oh, we gonna, we gonna, this podcast going to be, because y'all know the mama know everything and everybody business. So we going to find out on this podcast. We ain't going to talk no shit about nobody. We ain't going to mock nobody. But we definitely going to explore the possibilities that was going on. Because they kept calling her, remember, pull up to the birthday party. Come over here and dance on Carisha. Remember that? I yeah. feel like they was trying to recruit that baby yeah. to be, be in makes, on this. Shit. That sense. makes see what I'm saying? That's why I gotta have a podcast because I gotta get the shit on the table. Mm -hmm. Can't nobody get it on the table but my nosy. Okay, Tasha K ain't she? She over there making up. Shit. I know shit. we gonna get to the bottom of shit on this podcast. Tell me if I'm lying. Go on over there and tell me if I'm lying. I'm telling you, they was trying to recruit that baby. He said, let's get her away from him. Mm -hmm. That's what they was doing. We're going to put a couple pounds of that shit on her and have her fly. They ain't going to never suspect her. Damn, that would make so much sense. Mm -hmm. That's why he grabbed they... him and he said, what did he say? Not he suspect said, do you love her or do you, she needs love. All she needs is love. Or All she like needs is love. Mm. Now, how about that? We're going to explore all the possibilities. So I guess people care to hear Carlisa talk. I don't know. I don't know why y'all make some of these people famous, but it ain't my business. I'm not a hater. I just, you know, commentate on what I see. And um, what I see is somebody that couldn't even raise her children that wants to get online and talk to us about some tea. Like, ma'am, <laughs> what Tasha say? Don't you have a homeless son somewhere in an Airbnb room that you got on the internet right now? Like... I, listen, she's telling the truth, right? She's telling the truth. I do think that when they were inviting Creshawn to them parties to get her away from Blueface, it was like, oh, she already on crack. And they want, we, we know men that want to, we know men that want to smash her so we could get her. I really do believe that Carlisa is telling the truth with that. Diddy was trying to get a uh, uh, crackhead over here, uh, Creshawn, to come and maybe, you know, sell some cooch transfer some drugs, you know what I'm saying? Be a part of his harem that he had going on. I saw it, and I was like, I wonder what's going to happen. But no, it's because Krishan is a crackhead already on Blueface. So it wasn't going to happen because she already got her demon daddy, okay? And her demon daddy is in jail right now. So, Carlisa, it's so funny to me that you felt like Diddy was a worse option. Like, he actually probably was a better option than Blueface. Blueface is already in jail. Diddy not there yet. <laughs> she would have made more money on Diddy than she made on Blueface's ass. Okay, old crunchy looking ass nigga that you didn't raise. Like, it's crazy to me the way she gets online and talks as if she had no doing in the raising of that boy and why he's so messed up and why their relationship is so toxic and all over the place like this. Girl, it, it started with you. It started with you being a thought. It started with you not caring about your kids. It started with you wanting to pop that coat instead of being out here doing what you're supposed to be doing by your kids. Because if you had done what you're supposed to do by your kids, maybe we wouldn't be sitting up here looking at a crackhead running behind your weird-ass son, talking about, I think Diddy was trying to get her, man. She ain't in a better situation with y'all. Shit, wasn't they putting, wasn't Zeus Network putting Krishan's paycheck into y'all's bank account, bitch? At least Diddy was going to let the girl have her own bank account to put the 250 k in. <laughs> Shit, it was going to be a better situation than it is with you. Oh, Lord. I don't, mm, mm. But you know, she pretty. Carlisa's pretty. And it don't matter how ain't shit you are. If you're attractive, people are still going to mess with you. But let's go ahead and move on, y'all. I guess y'all can go and listen to Carlisa's podcast. But we're going to take a quick break, and I'm going to powder my face. I'm moving around. I'm drinking. I'm a human, bitch. Okay, I'm 35. My body hot. See y'all in a minute.
Meet the Browns, Glinos. Hey, okay, Miss Tina Brown. Tina Brown. Okay, Shane Brown. You ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Now, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I love Bobby Brown. You and Bobby, how close were y'all? Very close. What was it like living with Whitney? It was fun. You smoke crack with Whitney, you said? That's pretty. Absolutely. You don't know that? We only know Bobby and Whitney. Girl. And every time he's sitting down, he talking about Whitney. And I'm like, how as a new wife do you deal with this? Like, That's why I hit that bitch with a bottle. And it dwindled down to, it dwindled down. you know, some people that dwindled down to my brother touching three of my toes. Who? Bobby? Yes. Sure, but. Yes. But, you know. Yes. I'm, 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 just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't hold it no more. shows like this and would like to see more with me on stage in your city well i'm coming tickets on sale right now link in the description box as well as the bio hurry up now while tickets last okay <laughs> listen every time we do an ad for this bobby brown sister interview that's coming out tonight I'm like, I absolutely am going to be somewhere with my AirPod and me, me and Jasmine going to be at Posh. And I'm going to have to listen to this because I need to understand what's going on with the Bobby Brown family over there. Did she say she hit Bobby Brown wife in the head with a bottle? <laughs> Girl, I need to hear what's going on. That's coming on tonight on TashKLive.com. So y'all make sure y'all y'all locked in on that one because, girl, that's amazing. Ugh. Child, they were doing crack all over the place back in the day, Lord. So let's move on, y'all. Mariah the Scientist. Don't she look all innocent and cute? I love you, Jasmine. Thank you for this. Because, like, oh, look, look. She light-skinned with good hair and shit. Looking all, you know, a little dimple, you know what I'm saying? Ain't got no lips. Look like a little white girl, you know what I'm saying? I know y'all think she all innocent and shit. But play the video. Oh, loving hip hop. That's what it looked like. It looked like loving hip hop lights. Okay, girl, they rolling around on the ground. Girl, what is she wearing? Get your drawers out your booty. Oh, Lord. Girl, get up. I can't tell. I can't tell. Oh, not, not, they got the news on. <laughs> hey, all right, it's enough. It's enough. She showed up to the club to fight, y'all. They're like, trying to calm her down. Let me tell y'all what happened. So, this is all conjecture at this point, okay? Speculation, if you will. But what it looks like to me is that Mariah the Scientist, rapper, and uh, lover of Young Thug, decided to pull up to a club where a woman named Cleo was having a good time, minding her business, and Mariah comes through the door, and start swinging. Came through the door and start swinging. I said, oh, no. You showed up trying to fight. What's going on? It can only be one thing, y'all. The only time a woman shows up to a club to fight somebody of general purposes, it's about some dick. So sad that y'all go out like this. And I'm going to tell you why it's sad to be out here fighting over young thug. Because he in jail, baby. He in jail. Why are you fighting over dick you don't even have access to? Y'all know it's about that. Let me tell y'all what they said. They said that the girl Cleo posted on her Instagram, like at the beginning of this month, quoting that, am I your baby, daddy? Am I your baby? Y'all so fucking gross. I'm sorry. Grow up. I just want y'all to be grown sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like, why you always want to be some man's... Am I your baby? Like, what are you, a child? Ugh. But you know, whatever y'all into. Listen, if you want to be called daddy by a girl, if you ain't had no daddy and you want the dick you getting to be your daddy, that's your business. I had my daddy. I don't, I don't play those games. I ain't calling no nigga daddy. The fuck? He died in 09. I ain't got time for that. Okay? He was present. I know mine. I ain't doing this with y'all. But Mariah, you know, the nigga in jail is her daddy. <laughs> and 
and she fighting girls in the club. But it said it said in the comments she got her ass beat. I can't really tell from the video, but they say she bust in the door and Cleo whipped her ass. So you mean to tell me you rolling up the fight, getting your ass beat over over pain you can't even get? Ugh, girl, this is so sad. I need y'all to have more confidence about yourselves, young women. Okay, because when you have confidence and the ego about yourself, let me tell you what you're not gonna do. You ain't gonna never out here be rolling around on nobody's dirty ass club floor over some over some peen. Okay, rolling around on nasty, sticky club floor, all because of a man that you don't have access to. What happened, girl? Was Cleo on his books? Was Cleo sending him commissary? Girl, it's so sad. And I would say you too cute for this, but there ain't no such thing. I know y'all think only the big backs embarrass themselves for peen, but oh no, skinny, skinny, allegedly cute bitches do too. They embarrass themselves over dick every day. So sad. That's what they said. Well, let's move on. Because if y'all ain't going to do nothing out here, y'all going to assault somebody. Winter Blanco has a, a story about Trey Songs. And I'm gonna tell you something. I don't, I don't, I don't like Winter Blanco. I know she ain't she she ain't exactly the most likable, but I believe every word she said wrong. Friends with Trey Songs for years, and he never did anything to me either. And then one day he did. And he put his hands on me. And I never talked about it. This is the first time I've ever talked about this publicly. I really don't give a fuck anymore. He put his hands on me, scared the fuck out of me, and I never said anything. I never went to the police. I never answered the lawyer's calls when they was calling. I never tried to get some money out of it because at the time it was girls settling for $100,000, $200,000, and I never did it. In the, I what, in 2020, I had, when that girl came out saying that he raped her, I had her lawyer like reached out to me and was like, we're getting this stuff together and like, we want you to be a part of it. And I was like, I can't be a part of it. But like now kind of where, where I am in my life is like, I'm tired of letting abusers get away with so much yeah. shit. Like it's old as f When When did that happen? 2018. 2018. Mm -hmm. 2018. I can't. Never talked about it. And I remember I was like, not ever gonna talk about it because I was still trying to do music. Yeah. And I, was just like I don't want this effect to affect my career, yeah. which which a lot of women have mm -hmm. to deal with, and uh, like even when we've seen the right. the documentary, it's just like I yeah. don't want speaking out about this to affect my career negatively, yeah. which is very unfair, and yeah. that's what they use as a scare tactic. I mean, I had them, I had TMZ like calling my manager because like and trying to talk to me and trying to have conversations with me, and I was like, no, I will not. Like I will not. How I, did people find out about like how did I don't know really that? know how they found out exactly, but I was with a group of friends when it happened. They didn't. Uh, see Okay. It happened, but I had went and got in the car with them after, and I was like, I had like marks on my neck and scratches on my neck. All my nails were broken, my hands were bleeding, my knees were oh my scraped God. up and shit. So they had seen everything, and obviously, I told the girls what just happened in that moment, and um, I just chose to never say anything. I never, but the next day after it happened, he tried to text me and gaslight me and was like, Oh, I don't know what you think happened. Like you were drunk and you hit me. I literally have the screenshots of the text right here because I was I was just thinking about it before I, we sat down, which is why I'm even talking about it. And I have the text and I was like, you are not going to like trick me and play with my mind. I know what you did to me and you're not going to convince me otherwise. Keep in yeah. mind, this is at the point after I did Bad Girls Club. I knew my word had no weight yeah. because I'm on a TV show fighting. I'm looking yeah. like a violent person. So it's like that also gives people uh, a way to twist it and say, oh, she's always getting into shit she's crazy yeah. everybody knows she crazy and that you know takes away your experience when you have this bad rep for being like a a crazy bitch basically yeah. she not wrong y'all remember when when evelyn lazada got head butted by ocho cinco okay he head butted the shit out of her and her stuff was all messed up and y'all was like but you always fighting bitches though <laughs> You be throwing bottles at shit, though. And the truth of the matter is a woman fighting another woman is not the same thing as a man putting his hands on a woman. I don't care how y'all slice it. I know a lot of y'all like that. Oh, you know, no, that, no. Men are usually stronger. And so when they put their hands on a woman, it is not the same thing as two girls catching a fade. It's not the same thing as far as I'm concerned. People have been accusing Trey Songs of stuff for years, even at some of Diddy's parties. So anybody that does not believe her and thinks she's just doing this for clout, like, grow up. 
This, this is his M.O. This is what Trey Songz does. Like, she was saying that the reason why lawyers and TMZ and all these people were hitting her up is because they wanted her to be a part of what the other girls had going on because there are other girls that are saying things about Trey Songz. So it's like if we can get all of y'all together to give y'all shared experiences, it shows a pattern of behavior, and maybe he can stop getting away with these things because, like she said, He's been paying people off for years. Like, that's why he has to continuously tour. It's crazy that he's still able to tour, but, you know, y'all don't care. You know, as long as he come out there and sing a song y'all like and smile in y'all face, y'all are going to act like y'all never heard any of these allegations. But let me tell y'all how I knew. Yes, Kiki Palmer was like the first time we was like, mm, Trey Songs. Kiki Palmer said he did something weird. Y'all didn't believe her. And ever since then, we didn't see more and more evidence and heard more and more stories about Trey Songs not being safe for women or anybody. When he grabbed that white lady breast, the, the case he just got off on, when he grabbed that white lady breast and because she kind of like laughed, everybody just was like, oh, she wanted. No, no, it's called embarrassing, uncomfortable laughter. That's what it's called. But the fact that he felt he could just in public grab somebody's titties, like pull they, they top down, something's wrong with him. And y'all gonna keep acting like that's not what it is. But it is, okay? But, you yeah, know, I believe everything. But let me tell you, y'all remember that video when they was taping a video and he spit in that girl's mouth? I'm sorry. You can be whatever you want to be into with your man or your woman, child, whatever you into. You can be into whatever you want to be into with your person. But it seemed like a random person that, that was just on set and he spit in her mouth. And I was just, something's wrong with him. Something's wrong with him. I believe her. I don't really like her like that, but I don't, I don't need to like her in order to believe a pattern of behavior about Tremaine over here. Okay, y'all be safe out there. All y'all that continuously keep going to Trey Song's concerts and supporting him and screaming, you know, ah, Trey, you know, y'all want him to take y'all home and, you know, abuse y'all coochies. Yeah, be safe because he's not. Okay, be safe because he's not. Say that again. He pulled out Jaquees Dread. I forgot about that. And then Jaquees was on, sitting up there talking about, he, he an artist, he an artist. I, yeah, I ain't want to believe it when they said it. Oh, so it took for him to pull your locks out for you to believe about him, all of the things that people been saying, Jaquees. And that's how a lot of y'all be. A lot of y'all not going to believe nothing about Trey Songs unless it's you or somebody that's close to you. And that's sad. That's so sad because he is showing y'all who he is all the time. I really, I'm, I wonder why we never really heard more about that fight after that. Trey act like he ain't hear nothing that was going, what? Pull Dre's out. <laughs> Listen, if it's not a case I got I to gotta pay a lawyer for, I ain't worrying about it. That's how Trey feel. Like I'm over here having to pay off all these women that I'm assaulting all the time. I got I to gotta save my money for that. Tell Jaquees go sit down somewhere. Oh, Lord. Thank you for reminding me about that, Jasmine. Mm. Okay. Y'all. <laughs> As the Diddy's world turns, more is coming out. Well, Stevie J. Y'all, Stevie J. I know that Stevie J was not the person in those videos. Rodney Jones says that Diddy would show him and other men videos of Stevie J having sex with men in order to kind of groom them into being okay with sex with men. Like, ooh, look at, like who the who's, who's gonna be convinced by that? Who's gonna be like, oh, look at Stevie J banging the shit out of this dude. I guess I'll be okay with it now. Like who, <laughs> who's like, oh yes, I've never done this before, but please bring Steven Jordan's big back, big, 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 big cock over here, do it. No, nobody felt that way. But either way, child, it was in the court documents that Stevie J was a, por a part of the Diddy situation. And because 50 Cent loves to troll Diddy, he loves to troll everybody as if we're not going to ever have stories coming out about him. Just wait on it. But either way, Stevie J got upset and decided to make a video threatening to fight 50. Curtis, what's good, man? 
you and your feelings about Daphne, is she would gang them? Or is it that you sucking little rod dick? <laughs> However it go, I want you to fade, nigga. Fuck all that. Since it's entertainment, let me beat the shit out of you on TV or something. Don't duck that. I'm calling you out. What you want to do, Curtis? Curtis! I'm going to tell y'all the truth. If I was Curtis, I'd be scared that Stevie J was trying to knock me out so he could hunch me. Because Stevie J seems mad that y'all talking about his boo diddy. Y'all, I'm sorry. I'm convinced now more than ever. I'm convinced. I'm sorry. Let me pull this mic. I'm convinced now more than ever that Stevie J has absolutely been a big black cock for Diddy. It seems, because it's just, there's an emotional attachment that I'm seeing that makes me feel like y'all have hunched, okay? Y'all have hunched, Stevie. It's giving, he's my lover, he's my friend, he's my business partner, and I don't want anybody talking about him. I'm tired of it, 50. That's what it's giving to me. Like when he was, and then when Stevie J does the, Whenever he does like those facial expressions, I'm just like, oh my God, Stevie J is forcing penis on someone. I'm nervous. Yeah, I'm sorry, y'all. Stevie J's a creep. <laughs> Stevie J is a creep. And let's not forget, he loves him a woman with a strong, muscular body. Mimi, Jocelyn, I don't know why he was with Faith. Honestly, he probably was with Faith because he had a crush on Faith back in the day. And it's like to get the one that got away, even if she's not my type which is probably why he was always cheating on her and her cars and stuff like that. <laughs> but y'all, Stevie J is absolutely giving Diddy's my man and I'm a stick beside him is what it's giving. But he brought up Daphne Joy and now we understand a piece to the puzzle, okay? This is the reason why 50 Cent has continuously gone after Diddy. It's because... Daphne Joy went from 50 to Diddy. Okay, girl, I didn't know that was going to rhyme like that. Oh, yes, Daphne Joy is 50 Cent's baby mama. And when all of this stuff came out, he got online and started calling her your little sex worker. Look at you, your little sex worker. Like, making fun of it. This is the mother of your kid. And you're really online calling her a little sex worker. This nigga look like a greyhound. You know a dog? Greyhound in the face, nigga, like a puppy. But yes, so Daphne got online, and not only did she say that Rodney is lying about everything and she's gonna get an attorney so that she can fight his allegation saying that she's a sex worker. I don't believe her. I think she is a sex worker. I think all of the girls that are involved with Diddy don't really have a choice. I think they got involved with Diddy to be involved with Diddy. And like most pimps, if you love me, you're gonna hit the homeboy. If you love me, then you're going to do what I want you to do. And because they have to prove that they love him, they're going to do it, right? And also, 50 ain't showing you no love. 50 said, girl, you moved down the street from me so you could try to get another baby out of me, but I was too busy. 50, you lying. <laughs> I just want to say that, 50, you, you lying about that. You wasn't too busy because you never too busy to be online trolling people about shit, so you wasn't too busy. I truly believe that... He wanted to be with Daphne. Daphne wanted him to be a father to their child. But he didn't, y'all, this is not my fault. Jasmine had the heater on in here before I got here. And this is a light right here. This is not fair to me. Okay. She anemic and I'm hot body. And, and she be pouring me wine and stuff. And then I get hot and y'all be looking at me like it's my fault. And I'm like, she had the heater on. What y'all want me to do? <sighs> my house is cold. Okay. It's not my fault. But back to them. Okay, <sighs> y'all, real shit. Daphne said that 50 art her. Like, she said, you're my oppressor, you abuse me, and you art me. And also, there are allegations that he kicked in her door, and when he kicked in her door in 2016, he destroyed her home, and he kicked her ass, okay? I'm not sure how much kicking of ass it was, but he has been accused since 2016 of abusing this woman, 
Okay, and it does seem like she tried to maybe get back with him and it didn't work out. And Diddy came calling. And I'm going to tell y'all what that's about. Y'all, Diddy, I think, purposely went after her. First of all, she's his type. Y'all know Diddy loves him a old, you know, racially ambiguous, half Blasian, you know, half black, half Asian looking bitch. He loves that. That's like his fave. And I really think that's because that's what he wants to look like. Like he wants to look like these women. I think in his mind, whenever they're like, you know, having these freak offs. He imagines himself as the beautiful Blasian, you know what I'm saying, getting bent over by Stevie J. But, <laughs> sorry, y'all. But either way, I believe what she said about 50 because there have been, what was the rumor about 50 uh, burning down Tia, uh, not Tia, child not Tia, T he joined forces with Tia, but he had a baby mama whose house he burned down. Like, it's crazy how these men have issues with each other, and it seems as if they go and get revenge on each other by messing with each other's baby mamas and the women in their lives. I think because of whatever happened between 50 Cent and Diddy, we'll never really know, but it seems as if Diddy might have propositioned 50, 50 said, nigga, get out of here, and ever since then, Diddy has been like, oh, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you one way or another, nigga. I'm going to get your baby mama first. I'm going to have your son at my house. Oh, yeah. I can see Diddy feeling like he's outdoing 50 by being his baby mama saving grace, even though he paying her $250 a month to have freak-offs with him and whoever else he calls on. But now... It's beef between Daphne Joy and 50. 50 denies everything that Daphne is accusing him of, rape and abuse. He denies it all, and he's continuing to play in everybody's face and laugh about it as if it doesn't matter. But I'm going to just say I feel like 50 hasn't been doing the stuff that Diddy's been doing. The reason why Diddy's situation is so salacious is because not only is it, you know, sex trafficking, drugs, Rico, but it's also him messing around with men. And this community, the black community, tad bit homophobic. Y'all hear a man messing with a man and y'all think that's more problematic than the fact that the man may not have wanted to be messing around with Diddy. It's not about people being gay. It's about forcible situations where you're forcing yourself on people. And that's a lot of times what it seems like goes on when it comes to these situations with Diddy. He either mentally forcing you, financially forcing you, or physically forcing you into something that you don't want to do. Um, and I think these women, they meet him, he's charismatic, he has money, and he's showing them love, and, and he's coming off like brother love, the savior. And then one day he flips it on you, and now you're having sex with a random stranger from a Rolodex that says BBC. Sad. Well, we'll see what happens with 50 and Daphne Joy, but I don't think it's 50's day yet. Not yet, but we'll see, because... I don't think he's safe either. All right. I'll be sure. Well, first, first let's get into Diddy. And then we'll get into I'll be sure. Okay? Y'all, the update that I got last time I checked, okay? Because y'all love to tell us how we miss stuff. Like, I ain't miss a damn thing, okay? Diddy was recording people at his house. The federally hood pulled up. The kids were handcuffed. He had to give up his his plane um, um, records and everything to see where he had been going because his drug mule got arrested. You know, he's out there at Top Golf with his daughters trying to play it off and act like nothing's going on. But he looked worried to me. I don't care what he's talking about. He looks worried to me. And I also don't like the way he uses his kids as like a camouflage or, you know, as a pawn. I think he uses all the kids as pawns. I think the boy kids are involved in whatever he has going on behind the scenes. Absolutely. Okay. Quincy, Justin, Christian, all of them. Yeah, I think all of them are in one way or another involved in whatever Diddy has going on. And it may have started off against their will and eventually just kind of became a way of life. Um, that's what I feel about the situation. But y'all, they said that Diddy 
<laughs> is not as cash rich as y'all thought. Um, I was shout out to uh, Tisa Tells. I was watching her earlier, and she was talking about how the banks are putting him on blast for owing money because he's not cash rich. He's real estate rich. He has properties, so he'll keep get you know financing his mortgages and stuff like that in order to keep himself afloat. I told y'all that he didn't have the money that everybody thinks he have. Y'all up here, he our only billionaire. No, he's not a billionaire. It's cap. It's all been cap. He didn't even own Deleon or Soraka, any of those companies that he was just an affiliate for. But he made y'all think that he was owning shit and he had it like that. The same thing as him taking Young Miami shopping and having y'all think he's spending all of this money when really it's just a way for him to get tax write-offs. <laughs> Child, Diddy been out here playing in everybody's faces, okay? But to me, I think what's more messed up is how I feel like it, 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 he don't care about them kids, y'all. He don't care about them kids. I watched something earlier today that said he's been sabotaging their careers. Apparently, Justin got into Harvard. Quincy was trying to be an actor. And at every point, Diddy is there to, I guess, push their careers in a direction that he wanted them to go into. Justin got into Justin got into Harvard. He didn't want him to go to Harvard. He wanted him to go to another school. I'm like, why? Because if he go to Harvard, he gets the, the legacy kids and he starts to make his own connections so he doesn't need Diddy's connections anymore. I think with everybody, Quincy is beautiful. Quincy is, is like the most beautiful Al B. Shore, Kim Porter looking baby. I've, like he's just attractive, okay? I think Diddy was hating on him. Diddy didn't want Quincy to become famous on his own. So you put up all these roadblocks so that your kids may be successful Successful, but only successful because of you so that you can control what they do. So I do feel bad for his kids because I feel like at some point it wasn't really up to them. But at this point, I believe that they're involved in a lot of what Diddy has going on over there. And Quincy, Quincy and Al B. Shore, okay, y'all know that Al B. Shore is Quincy's biological father, okay? And that's why he's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's pretty because I'll be sure was pretty. I can tell you how I feel about you night and day. I'm sorry, y'all. That's my shit. You can always go back to that song. Shout out to LB Shore. But LB Shore, I'm tired of you and Quincy because y'all playing on my top. Quincy posted and was like, I'm going to talk. 8 p.m. Oh, five, look, five o'clock, Discord, Patreon, I'm talking. Y'all know everything behind the paywall. You go behind the paywall, shout out to Sean Davies, okay? One of one of the uh, people that's always on Tasha K's uh, show, Wine is the New Tea. Shout out to Sean, okay? Sean posted the Discord on his channel. All they talking about is finances and money. He was late and he was only on there for like 10 minutes and he wasn't talking about shit. So I don't like the fact that you and your biological daddy are always getting on the internet pump faking like y'all about to tell us something and y'all never really do. I'm tired of y'all, okay? I don't know if it's the light-skinnedness. I don't know what it is about y'all, but <laughs> I want y'all to stop pump faking. If you're not going to actually come out and say some shit, stop insinuating, okay? Stop using it for marketing. Go do your shit. Be quiet if you're going to be quiet. But if you're going to say something, say something. Stop ganking us trying to use, you know, everybody wanting to know what's going on with Diddy and how the kids are really feeling about it because the kids are pump faking online. You know, a, a Christian posted a little cap. You know, oh, it's cap. Boy, please, ain't shit cap, okay? I don't want to hear that. But Al B. Shore told Quincy, come home. The door is wide open. You're safe, son. Love you. Pops, you're biological. I'm sorry, y'all. That's lame as fuck. You're biological? Like, 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 I needed you to tell me that you the dick I rolled in on. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> Listen, I'll be sure. I don't know what happened, but I low-key feel like Diddy raised your son out of spite. <laughs> I feel like Diddy took your son and raised your son out of spite. And I also feel like that's probably why you can't trust that. Diddy means any good by Quincy because 
it just gives you would probably sabotage Quincy specifically because he belongs to the pretty nigga that is LB Shore. Okay, LB Shore had the good hair. Diddy had to go and perm his hair. Okay, <laughs> Diddy had to go and perm that hair. He had to go get shiny jewelry and wear sunglasses. LB Shore was on the album cover with just his face. OK, so I do feel like, you know, there's some jealousy there and I don't know what's going on with the kids, but eventually the kids are going to talk. It is just it's a mat. It's just a matter of time. But they're going to talk just like Russell Simmons daughter Aoki was online crying and screaming into a microphone about how her daddy ain't shit. Y'all will see it eventually. But today everybody is trying to stay quiet and use this shit to their financial advantage. I mean, y'all might as well because y'all ain't going to be able to use Diddy's money anytime soon. Well, let's move on to Natanya Rubin, you guys. This is an old story, but we spoke about the fact that Shine the artist that that Diddy was like promoting and you know he was in charge of his career and the shooting happens in 99 at the club this is when Diddy was with J Lo okay and J Lo was at this club with him and this guy who's a hood guy Diddy must have bumped into him spilled champagne on him and a fight goes off and this woman here ends up being shot in the face Shine went to jail for years for this shooting it was his album release party and diddy allegedly made him take the fall let's say what she had to say yeah and you have said since really right after the shooting that it was p diddy who shot you um i mean i think you even said it to to the doctor that night right i said it immediately i literally watched them pull out the guns i've had a clear point of view i mean for god's sake i got shot in my nose I was facing them directly. I watched everything occur and have described it, you know, vehemently to all parties involved. I think in our society, we, we are, we have respectability politics. There are people who want to be adjacent to power or celebrity or money. And there's a hierarchy of respectability because his name was more notable. He was believed rather than a victim who gave a first-hand account. By the grace of God, I survived. Yeah, and this was also a different time. I mean, things were very, very different in 1999. I mean, did you sense right from the beginning that no one believed you? Well, I, I don't think that was on my mind. I think first and foremost, I'm a mother. I'm a mother of three. At the time, I was a mother of two. And just surviving and getting home to my children was of the utmost importance to me. Being whole and being able to mother them, that was, you know, primary on my list. Uh, I didn't have any reason to believe that someone, you know, to think that someone would not believe me. But as things unfolded, it was a very short period of time where I realized that's what in fact was happening. So as I mentioned, Diddy has denied being the one who pulled the trigger. Um, but this is interesting, Anatanya. Rodney Jones, also known as Little Rod, uh, is now suing Diddy for sexual harassment. That's something that's been in the headlines for the last couple of days. And there's a very interesting quote from his lawsuit that relates back to you that I want to read because it sort of ties all of this together. Um, and it says, Jones claims in the lawsuit, Mr. Combs shared that he was responsible for the shooting in the nightclub in New York City with rapper Shine. He shared that artist, that artist and Mr. Combs' girlfriend at the time, Jennifer Lopez, a.k.a. J-Lo, carried the gun into the club for him and passed him the gun after he got into an altercation with another individual. So now you have Little Rod in this new lawsuit saying that Diddy told him that he actually was responsible. I mean, what did you think when you read that? Well, I was incensed for a number of reasons. First and foremost, for the past quarter of a century, he's vehemently denied that he was responsible, even though I knew wholeheartedly, and as so many others who were in the club that night, we all knew he was responsible. A lot of people were afraid for their safety, justifiably so. I mean, the history that has occurred in the last 25 years proves that they were justified in being afraid. But I wasn't afraid. I wasn't afraid because I still bear the... I have nine bullet fragments with my, remaining in my face. So when I saw that, that count 128, that's actually count 128 of the lawsuit, when I saw that on a podcast that was analyzing all of the counts, I knew I had to speak. I had no intention of going viral. I was just getting it out of me. I have a mantra, having my say. It was a time 
uh, a few years ago where I had a talk radio show called Having My Say. Well, that's very important to me. I believe everyone is entitled to have their say. Far too often we don't hear people or listen. And so I just wanted to get it out of me because it was like an audible deep breath that I needed to take. And I made the TikTok video not expecting it to go viral. Went to pick up my daughter, came back home, and she's like, I'm, and I literally told her, I'm like, well, you're probably going to see it tomorrow. I made a video on TikTok. Maybe 100 people will see it. By the time we got home, she said, Mommy, it was 70,000 people. And I could not believe it. But it was time. It was time for me to speak. I'd stayed quiet for 25 years. It was we my time to speak. Yeah, we don't know yet what's going to happen with the P. Diddy situation. Obviously, again, he hasn't been arrested. There's clearly a very big federal investigation happening now. But I'm thinking back to other cases, R. Kelly. So, basically, I feel like they might reopen this case. It's a possibility, y'all, that the federal hood may reopen this case because it sounds like she never changed her story. And the only reason he probably got away with it is because of all of his influence and his fame, which is why it's so annoying for so many of y'all to see this as, oh, y'all trying to drag a black man down. No, this is somebody that this woman here said shot her in the face. In the face. The face. Girl, the face. You could shoot me anywhere. Tell show me in my face. Like, that's crazy. And he got away with that allegedly. I mean, I didn't even know that J-Lo brought the gun in for him. That says a lot, because y'all know Jenny over there trying to, you know, back when I was young, I was Jenny from the block, and my hair was just all, and I was just, like, running down the block like a little kid, you know? And then everybody, y'all, everybody from where J-Lo is from keep coming out talking about, girl, we don't claim you. You not real Puerto Rico. We don't claim you, bitch. <laughs> Child, J-Lo seems like she might be going through a little downward spiral herself over there. I hope that, you know, Ben Affleck, because, you know, if you, if you white, you Ben Affleck. I hope <laughs> that he's able to save her the way Beyonce is probably over there saving Jay-Z. You know, Diddy didn't have nobody that could save him because he a hoe. If he, like, probably Kim Porter was the savior. Whenever he had a Cassie, when he had Cassie, Cassie was, as soon as you lose these women, you might be up she, uh, shit creek without a paddle as far as I'm concerned. And he might as well be because he sold off all of his uh, revolt, um, what's it called, shares to Richelieu Dennis. Y'all know Richelieu Dennis um, is now in charge of Essence, but he also, I believe, used to own Shea Moisture or one of those. I believe so. Yeah. So listen, him and his scarves love to buy stuff. I saw this man one time in New Orleans during Essence Week when I was working. Because, you know, I told y'all I had a real job back in the day, right? So <laughs> I'm working behind the scenes. I'm doing camera work and shit. Richelieu watch it walking in 100 degree New Orleans, you know, July Essence Fest. I mean, yeah, Essence Fest weather with a goddamn scarf. I said, oh, something wrong with him. <laughs> I said, what this nigga got a scarf on for? It's like 97 degrees and it's humid as shit in New Orleans. And he got a scarf on. I said, something's wrong. So, yeah, y'all, it's, it's just a lot of fugazi funny shit going on. But he now owns Revolt TV. Diddy has sold his shares because he needs the money because he's going to have to defend himself against the federal hood that have a 90% arrest and conviction rate. <laughs> so, good luck. Young Miami, come to the front, man. We got to talk again. Y'all, Young Miami look like Diddy Mama. I don't know if y'all ever paid attention to it. But she looked like a young version of this nigga mama. <laughs> and I think a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all young girls out there, y'all really thought they was in love. And I kept telling y'all, ain't no love with no nigga like Diddy. I don't know why y'all don't pay attention to men's patterns with other women. Y'all really think y'all coochie gonna, like, change a nigga? That's not what happens. Coochie don't change nobody, y'all. I, I promise I tried. It doesn't work, okay? They gonna be who they gonna be. If they inconsistent, they gonna be who they gonna be. If they a liar, they gonna be who they gonna be. If they a hoe out here, they gonna be who they gonna be. And there's nothing you can do about it. So when Carisha and the rest of y'all thought that this 50 something year old man was gonna change his ways behind the city girl, a self-proclaimed whore, what a post that. Carisha said, y'all be going for anything. 
Y'all be going anything. You for that, <laughs> he said, you for that 250, uh, 50K a month. Something the internet made up and y'all ran with. Nigga don't even pay that for child support. Why the F would a nigga ever pay me 250K for, for what? First of all, Diddy don't have to pay child support because if you notice, Diddy always has his kids. That's why he don't have to pay child support because he has equal custody of them. <laughs> That's why he don't really be having to pay a lot in child support. And, you know, a lot of that stuff happened back in the, in the 90s and all of that. So, a lot, you know, those kids came early on. Of course, he's not going to have to pay that much in child support. Child, let him have gotten your ass pregnant now, and I bet you he would have had to pay a pretty penny. Maybe not 250 a month. But I don't believe nothing that Carisha's saying. Carisha, he would pay you 250 k a month for the fuck-offs because we at the end of the show. And he would pay you to keep quiet about what's going on because you're a public figure with your own your own fame and your own money. So if you ever decided to go on lockdown somewhere, get away from him and then talk about what was going on, you could. And let's not forget, over these past, what, two years since she's been messing with him, there have been so many posts going back and forth with her being depressed, her being sad, and then popping out doing shopping sprees with him, and he acting like, oh, my God, she's spending all my money. Like, tax write-off, nigga. She's, she's promoting for that, that alcohol that she was an affiliate for, that she became an affiliate for, and now you don't own it no more. Child, Carisha. You and the kids, because y'all like the same age, y'all act like this is not happening and it's all cap. But this is happening, Carisha. And I know that you said you was a whore with a W. And when she said she was a whore with a W, I don't know if y'all know what that meant. Whore with a W mean I'm a white whore. And white whores get paid big bucks. White whores know what's going on, okay? I'm not just no regular city girl whore that gets some peen and get a little, you know, get a little bag, get a little thousand dollars from an old nigga. Oh, no, baby. That's not what's going on. I'm getting shows. I'm getting production, okay? I'm getting hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm getting bags that appreciate in value that I can resell online later on if I need to pay for lawyer's fees, and I probably need to. But y'all see how JT didn't move on. JT got a song with Dochi that's coming out because she had to get away. Y'all, I'll never forget when she was standing at the BT Awards with the Go Poppy sign and JT was just like. <laughs> that told me everything I needed to know. My friend going out bad, but she thinks she winning, so I'm going to let her have it. I ain't going to say nothing. I'm going to stay here with my little cute, abusive, androgynous boyfriend that's the same age as me. Okay, I, I got power in this dynamic. She ain't got no power in her dynamic with Diddy, okay? Y'all pray for Carisha because she thinks she a bottom bitch, but until the federal rally hood get involved, you never really know. Because <laughs> Dade County and, and, and the, you know, the citywide Miami police officers, they may not be scary to y'all, but when the FBI get involved, and they talking about freezing assets and finding out what's in your mammy name. Then all of a sudden, it's like, I'm going to have to let him go. <laughs> I'm going to have to let him go. They, they talking about taking my mama stuff. I can't let them take my mama stuff. <sighs> I hope you be all right, Carisha. Young and dumb and full of cum. Y'all, lastly, we're going to end with Joe Button. And the reason why we ended with Joe Button is because I'm so surprised that Joe Button said something. Because for the longest, ever since everything came out, Joe been acting like he didn't want to speak on Diddy. And I'm like, why? Joe, is there a video of you fucking a dog at Diddy's house or something? Uh, I'm sorry. That was too much? My bad. <laughs> Word on the, Just words on the curb, y'all. My bad. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a little bit tip at this point. Okay? I miss my husband. It's a lot going on. Okay? But let's go ahead and play the video. You don't have no plausible deniability with Homeland at your house. You, you did something. And with your private you jet? Did, it's uh, <laughs> Dog. It's over for that best case scenario shit you're talking about. There is nothing to say that Puff is on the run, nor has he been charged with anything. So right. we want to be very clear in that. True. But we niggas. So, and we from where we from. Mm -hmm. So we look at this through that, through that lens. And this looks, this is, this is a rap. Yeah. Not no. only is this a rap, this is about to get much worse. I agree. It is. This is about to get bad, 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 bad. I'm going to say that Puff is on the run, nor has he been charged with anything. So Correct. we want to be very clear in that. True. But we niggas. So, and we from where we from. Mm -hmm. So we look at this through that, through that it's lens. And this look, this is. Ah, 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 ah. Child, 
y'all, listen, Mariah told y'all, it's a wrap, okay? <sighs> well, y'all, Joe Button put it out there. This does not look good. I think anybody that thinks this is a, you know, innocent until proven guilt, girl, that's not, no, no. The federal rally hood said that they knew exactly what they was looking for, and the things that they were looking for is based off of victim testimony. Meaning that people are telling them you can go and look in this place in, in Diddy's house and find the evidence right here. And that's what they went in there and did. They took pictures, cell phones, computers, and I'm sure they took video. And I don't know why people don't understand, but when I tell y'all the Hugh Hefner model, the Hugh Hefner model is I have video cameras recording people at parties doing shit they're not supposed to be doing so that I can blackmail them. So when you see Prince Harry involved in the $30 million lawsuit, understand that people are going to Diddy's parties and thinking that they're free to have a good time, but really there's a hidden camera somewhere getting evidence on them because if Diddy needs help, he can call you because there's video of you smashing a dog or a girl that's, you know, underage or a girl that's passed out or doing drugs, maybe some strawberry pink cocaine on, on the table and you, you know what I'm saying? Girl, it's not looking good. I'm sure there'll be way more developments coming, you know, as soon as we get off live, child. I'm sure something else will come out. But it's Easter week, weekend. OK, and we just going to have a good time and we're going to pray for everybody's safety and that everything turn out all right. All right. I'm your girl, Bondi Blue. Tasha will be back on Monday. So everybody that hate me, listen, I'm out. OK, y'all ain't got to worry about a bitch until the next time she calls me and then your ass going to be mad again. But that's all right, because I know you love and hate me. But anyway, follow me on YouTube at Bondi Blue, okay? I am a YouTuber. I do this. I've been doing it for a long time. I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. I'm not the assistant and never have been, baby, okay? Stop playing on my top. That was not me, all right? The assistant wasn't as good at this as I am. That's why I'm here. Um, I'm sorry, that's just true tea. Follow me on Instagram at Bondi Blue. Bondi, uh, I'm sorry, Blue Rose Bondi on Twitter. I gotta remember because y'all know I used to have everything Bondi Blue, but X is, you know, trying to make everybody pay for shit. But anyway, follow me on all of the platforms. Make sure you check me out on TashaKLive.com because I'm always releasing my exclusive content, my members only content on TashaKLive.com. And if you want to see Tasha on stage, live in person, and maybe me one day, okay? Listen, they want me to be at these Florida shows, Tasha. Okay? TashaKOnStage.com. I love y'all. Thank y'all. Oh, yes, and don't forget, Bobby Brown's sister is, is spilling all the tea. All the cracks she did with Whitney. She said Bobby was touching her daughters. Girl, I got to find out what's going on, so I'm going to be on there watching that as well. But thank y'all so much, Wine Nose, for, for messing with me for this week. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Cheers. <laughs>